Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. A few weeks ago, you got to see me unbox and put together the Zone Star Z5M2 printer on a live stream. I've had a chance to play with it, try to dial it in just a little bit, and I've finally been able to form an opinion. And I'm here today to tell you all about it. So you ready? Let's do it. Okay, for everyone that missed the live stream, this is the Zone Star Z5M2. Not to be confused with the Zone Star Z5F, which is only a single extruder model. The Z5M2 is has a mixing capable extruder. It looks to be similar to an E3D Cyclops, uh, in that it can take the two and it mixes them in the extruder. Now, in my testing, I didn't intentionally do any mixing. I did have that as kind of a fallout factor, but I didn't want to get that far down that path because I was mostly concerned about extruding two colors and or being able to extrude a color and a support material. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I don't care for on the printer. There's a couple of things that are annoyances to me. And there's some things that I really like about this guy. So to start off with, the things that I don't like about it is on the build plate down here, the lower piece for the Y axis is acrylic, as is the base. It doesn't seem to be too bad on the base, but you do have a little bit of flex. The thing I don't like with that acrylic is that while it's all V-slot and V-wheels everywhere, if you can see any of them there and on the base, they didn't use any eccentric spacers. So there's no way to adjust any play as the wheels wear. And as you can see here as I'm wobbling it, you can tend to get a little bit of wobble in the base. Likewise, you can see in the Z, uh, excuse me, the X-axis, no, well, where the X crosses the Z over here, it's only a single lead screw, so this side is free floating. So you do tend to get a little bit of play on that side, but it doesn't seem to impact prints too much. We'll come back to the Y in just a minute here. The other real annoyance for me, as you can see as I pull this back, is a lot of these areas still have paper. Now this was a quick assemble printer. It came in just a few pieces that you put together with a few screws. Doesn't take that long. What was my annoyance factor is a lot of these acrylic pieces still had the paper on them, including this base plate. I peeled a little bit of away, but the back piece and underneath the controller board and underneath the power supply, it still has the paper on there. So although it's a quick assemble printer, if you want to get that paper off there, you've got to take the whole thing back apart, peel the paper and put it back together. I found that just to be a little bit annoying doesn't impact functionality at all. It's just, again, just a minor annoyance. One of the other things that I don't care for on the printer is the control board mounts on the inside here, the power supply on the outside. And you may not be able to see that with this here. Power supply on the outside, the controller board is on the inside here. And that comes very close to impacting, if you're doing a wide print on the bed, it's very close to impacting that. It would be great if this had a cover and maybe was spaced back just a little bit to give it a little bit more room. Uh, again, it's not something that impacts the way that it prints, um, but it's something that I would like to see and probably something I'll, I would come back and modify later. Another minor annoyance here with the LCD is when you have the dual extruders, on the top, LCD in the middle, there's very little room here to try to get your SD card in and out the side of the LCD. That could very easily be remedied by 3D printing a new LCD bracket that lifts it up and angles it just a little bit and gives you a little bit better view. Let's go back briefly and talk about what I said about the eccentric spacers and the Y bracket. Now, the printer would be, because it is all V-slot, the printer is 
very easy to modify. I actually ended up breaking the Y bracket myself, full disclosure. Um, I was trying to adjust that to tighten that up a little bit and I over tightened the screws on the wheels and I ended up cracking it. So I ended up just printing a little bit of a plate. I used some epoxy to fill in the areas of the acrylic that broke off drilled the holes back and I printed a plate underneath it to give it support and while it did not resolve the the wobble here had I taken the time to do it I could have easily modified that to add eccentric spacers to allow for tightening that up I was just trying to keep it as stock as possible for purposes of the review and that's why I did not do that the other thing uh, it does include this blue filler material that is meant to go in these slots here on the front and down the side to make it uh, cosmetically pretty similar to a CR-10. Um, I opted not to put that in because I know I'm going to have to take it back apart to peel this paper off eventually so I didn't want to put it in and it didn't impact the review. And the last thing that I'll mention that I didn't like about it was the spool holder that was included. The spool holder was this arm that attached over here on the side and it folded up or down. Two problems with it. One is the spool holder isn't large enough to support a full-size spool, so I ended up using this metal one, uh, actually a pair of these metal ones, that I had picked up elsewhere online. The other part of it is it can't support the weight. You can only fit the 750 gram size spools on it uh, for like the, the MakerBot um, style, the old little six inch-ish size spools. Now things that I really did like about this printer. It came with a paper installation guide. While they're not the dire best directions in the world, this was enough for me to assemble it on the live stream. Taking that a step further, once I had it assembled and I actually popped the SD card into a computer, the SD card was organized with a bunch of files covering uh, sample prints for both two and two color and single color. It had a more detailed build manual, a build of materials, and for documents that weren't included, it had text files that took you to a Google Drive online that you could download updated versions of the manuals, updated firmware. The firmware is available for it. Um, and also, the board is not locked, so you can upgrade the firmware. Specs of the feature, again, printer again, that I haven't talked about is it does have bed leveling or assisted leveling uh, with a inductive sensor here on the side. It does not include glass for the bed, but I added a peel poly sheet to allow me to stick. It only comes with tape on it. As I mentioned, you can print a bracket. You could also very easily print a couple of support brackets to eliminate this wobbling that I'm talking about here. And you could very easily print a bracket to go under the Y here to add those eccentric spacers. Very minor things. Now, this printer does take a lot of dialing in to be able to get some decent dual color prints. I started off with the test print uh, from the SD card here. It's this little vase. I moved on to a Benchy, which came out with a little bit of stringing, but it wasn't bad. And again, there was no profiles included with this, so I kind of had to create my own profile in Simplify 3D to get it printing. I moved on from Simpli or I'm sorry, I used Simplify 3D because I was the most experienced there in trying to create dual extrusion profiles uh, from earlier days playing with that on the GMAX. So I also printed the Moai eyeglasses holder in a single color, the Veroni cat, which it did nicely, although there's a little bit of stringing. And I did the squizzle. Then I moved on to the dual color prints. I started off with this guy. And hang on, let me show you. This is my box of experimented dual color prints that I could not to get come out. 
it took a while and several tries to find the right extrusion settings to get that dialed in. Once it's dialed in, this was one of the earlier prints. As you can see, I have a little bit of stringing here, and my purge block wasn't quite large enough that I started getting some color mixing so that I got the blue mixed in with the clear. I then proceeded to this fella here while I had that color in there, which was a, the dual color Moai, where I used the clear with some Repcord blue. Um, and I realized it's very difficult to blend the clear because of the amount of purge that needs to happen. So I moved on to using Filamentum Noble Blue, which was actually for this guy in a single color print just to get the temperatures down. And I moved on to the filament gray and the, I'm sorry, the vertigo gray and the vertigo galaxy. Um, I moved through the other Bulbasaur onto the Moai and then onto the Chaos Cortec uh, Babam dual color. And the last print I did before doing the video this morning, which I left sitting on the bed here still, was the vertigo galaxy and the noble blue Omnom from Sparky Face 5. All right, so what do I think about this printer? It comes at a roughly $220 price point as of this video using the sale prices on GearBest. Zonestar is not a huge known brand uh, compared to Anet or Tronix Y or some of the other Chinese printer manufacturers, which was part of the reason I was interested in reviewing this particular unit to see where they were going. They unlock the board. You can update the firmware. You can change from repeater to Marlin or do whatever you want with it. Um, you can swap out the extruder. It's fairly open. It's a V-slot printer. So all said and done for that $220 price point, I think it is a very decent printer in that range. In no way does it compare to a a Prusa MK2 or Prusa MK3 as it's coming out um, in the prints we've seen off those, especially for dual extrusion. But for $220, it is a very easy gateway into dual extrusion. If you only want to experiment with two colors or one color and a support material. I would recommend this printer to people that have some experience working with a single extruder printer. I would not necessarily recommend it as somebody's first printer, although the baby brother, the Zonestar Z5F, which is a single extruder printer, might be better for you. The reason is, is because of the type of mixing extruder in here, it takes a little bit of experience and time to be able to dial it in to get some decent dual color prints. And there's a lot of frustration behind that. Given that it's not a kit, it's a RTA style, if you will. It's a three piece printer, four piece printer that you just couple of screws and it's together. I think people purchasing that are probably looking for a little bit more refined of a profile so that they don't have to necessarily sit and dial it in. People looking for a kit obviously are looking to for grounds up, hands down, you know, out the door, do everything yourself. So summary, decent little printer for 220 bucks. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's not bad. It is a good gateway printer. I would definitely consider adding some mods to it, which I will probably keep this around for a while to do just that because I don't have another dual color printer. And yeah, that, that's about it. It would probably make a nice little Christmas present to have under the tree for somebody um, that does have a little bit of experience or they're looking for something a little bit more you know, than their ANET A8 that they've been tinkering with and they want to move on to the next step. So that's about it. If you're interested in learning more about this from the manufacturer, I've included not just the GearBest affiliate link down below, but I've also included a link to the manufacturer's website. 
uh, it's not the best website in the world. It's a translated website, it appears to be, but they are a legitimate company that actually does have their own website. Um, so I've included that down below as well. And that's about it. If you like the channel, if you like what we're doing here, uh, please feel free to subscribe. Hit that button so you get notified of new content. We're definitely going to be trying to put some stuff out between now and the holidays to keep you entertained and maybe give you some projects to do over the downtime around the holidays. And with that, I bid you aloha. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Don't go anywhere just yet. I forgot to get the disclaimer out. This printer was provided to me by GearBest to review and give you my honest opinions of. I was not compensated in any other way by GearBest for telling you about this printer other than receiving the unit and being allowed to keep it. The opinions that I've expressed today are mine and mine alone. And with that, I rebid you aloha. <laughs>